Pokemon Black version. Author unknown. I'm what you could call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. Pokemon Diamond and Jade, Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency with which you can find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and such. Now, they're generally fun. Even if they are unplayable, which they often are, the mistranslations and the poor quality make them unintentionally humorous. I've been able to find most of the ones that I've played online, but there's one I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about five years ago. Here's a picture of the cartridge, just in case anyone recognizes it. Unfortunately, when I moved two years ago, I lost the game, so I can't provide you with screen caps. Sorry. The game started with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar intro of Red and Blue version. However, the press start screen had been altered. Red was there, but the Pokemon did not cycle through. It also said black version under the Pokemon logo. Upon selecting new game, the game started the Professor Oak speech, and it quickly became evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, you had, in addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, another Pokemon, Ghost. The Pokemon was a level one. It had the sprite of the ghosts that are encountered in Lavender Tower before obtaining the Silph Scope. It had one attack, Curse. I know that there is a real move named Curse, but the attack did not exist in Generation 1, so it appears that it was hacked in. Defending Pokemon were unable to attack Ghost. It would only say that they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of the defending Pokemon would be heard, but it would be distorted, played at a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear, and the defending Pokemon would be gone. If used in a battle against a trainer, when the Pokeballs representing their Pokemon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. The implication was that the Pokemon died. What's even stranger is that after defeating a trainer and seeing Red received $200 for winning, the battle commands would appear again. If you selected Run, the battle would end as it normally does. You could also select Curse. If you did, upon returning to the overworld, the trainer sprite would be gone. After leaving and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer would had been would be replaced with a tombstone like the ones at Lavender Tower. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against Ghost Pokemon. It would also fail if it was used against trainers that you would have to face again, such as your rival or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against them, however. I figured this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use the previously uncapturable Ghost. And because Curse made the game so easily, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the Elite Four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of Ghost and a couple of Pokemon I used for HMs, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, Many years later. It then cut to Lavender Tower. An old man was standing, looking at tombstones. Then you realize that this man was your character. The man moved at only half the normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokemon with you, not even Ghost, who up to this point had been impossible to remove from your party due to positing in the PC. The overworld was entirely empty, there were no people at all, and there were still the tombstones of the trainers that you would use Curse on, however. You could go pretty much anywhere in the overworld at this point, though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokemon to use HMs, and regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued on an infinite loop. After wandering for a while, I found that if you go through Diglett's Cave, one of the cuttable bushes that normally blocks the path on the other side is no longer there, 
allowing you to advance and return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going to the exact tile where you start the game, the screen will cut to black. Then a sprite of Caterpie appeared. It was replaced by a Weedle, and then a Pidgey. I soon realized as the Pokemon progressed from Rattata to Blastoise that these were all the Pokemon that I had used Curse on. After the end of my rivals team, a youngster appeared, and then a bug catcher. These were the trainers I had cursed. Throughout the sequence, Lavender Town music was playing, but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. And by the time your rival appeared on screen, it was little more than a demonic rumble. Another cut to black. A few moments later, the battle screen suddenly appeared. Your trainer sprite was now that of an old man, same as the one who teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghost appeared on the other side along with the words, Ghost wants to fight. You couldn't use items, you had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect Ghost, but it did chip a bit off your own HP. When it was Ghost's turn to attack, it would simply say, Ellipses. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, Ghost would finally use Curse. The screen cut to black a final time. Regardless of the buttons you pressed, you were permanently stuck at this black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was turn the Game Boy off. When you played again, new game was the only option. The game had erased the file. I played through this hack game many, many times, and every time the game ended with this sequence. Several times I didn't use Ghost at all, though he was impossible to remove from the party. In those cases, it did not show any Pokemon or trainers and simply cut to the cinematic battle with Ghost. I'm not sure what the motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it was presumably not for monetary gain. And it was very well done for a bootleg. It seems he was trying to convey a message. Though it seems I am the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure what it was. The inevitability of death? The pointlessness of it? Perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into a children's game. Regardless, this children's game has made me think, and it has made me cry. This has been a narration of Pokemon Black version by Necrostevo. Thank you so much for listening or watching. If there are any Pokemon creepypastas that you would like to hear me read, feel free to leave them in the comments. Or, of course, send them to me on Twitter. Happy Halloween.